start from a place of just best practices. I'm not a salesperson. I've always struggled with, uh, you know, salespeople are really great at getting out there, doing that negotiation piece. But for the rest of us, how do we make it work for us? Um, so I want to start by asking everybody who here has actually negotiated salaries before. There's a um, there's a poll function. Jeff, you want to kind of walk us through where that poll function is? All right. If you go to the uh, chat box, you can just hit yes or no, and we'll see it on your name. So we'll be able to see. Uh, we should be able to see people if you go and vote yes or no. That's what we're looking for here. Looks like we've got a couple who have negotiated before. Uh, looks like most people have not. And that's pretty common. Um, yeah. Here we go. We're getting a few more responding here. Um, and most people don't out of fear, but most, and, and yeah, if y'all have questions, this is, this is new to me. This is my second Zoom presentation. I'm used to doing it in person. So if y'all have questions, reach out and ask. We'll have a whole section at the end and Jeff's gonna keep an eye on the chat box. And if there's something timely, he'll break in and, and ask me to, um, uh, to go dig a little bit deeper. So most organizations have wiggle room in their salary. So if we don't negotiate, we're actually leaving money on the table. Very, and a lot of people will say, well, but what if I negotiate and they won't wiggle? Well, they'll usually tell you that, but only the worst kind of companies are going to withdraw an offer because you tried to negotiate. So there's really very little risk in negotiating. So it's always a good idea to at least attempt to negotiate. But how do you do it? Um, we've all heard, don't talk money too soon, right? We've all been told bear with me we, we've all been told that we want to push that conversation as far out as possible and i'm going to tell you absolutely don't ever be the first one to talk money it's really hard to go through two or three interviews and not have an idea but the, the longer you wait the more leverage you have but we often get asked on that very first phone call what were you making at your last job? That's one of the most common questions asked. And I'm gonna tell you, this is the absolute worst question a company can ask. It's actually become illegal in some states. I think eventually it will be illegal in all states right now. It can still be asked in Texas and it still is asked by a lot of employers. So there's really only one good response to that. And that is what I made before isn't relevant to this conversation or to this position but I'd really love to learn what your range is. Now, if they're a good company, they're gonna realize their mistake. They really just wanna know what you're looking for. If they're not a good company, they're gonna push back and then you have to decide how badly you wanna work for them. But legitimately, what you are making at your last job is not relevant. You may be switching positions completely. You may have been underpaid. You may have been overpaid but that what you were making shouldn't have any relevance to this conversation or to the job that you're getting, okay? So don't ever feel like you have to reveal that information. If you want to, if you feel like it's your next, it's the only way to get to the next step and you're comfortable doing it, I'm not telling you you can't, but I'm telling you a lot of people aren't comfortable and you shouldn't have to reveal that information. Now, a better question is, somebody's been playing with my presentation, I like the graphics here, is what are your salary expectations? And that is what they should be asking. And again, they're gonna ask it really early, usually. And sometimes you don't have enough information to answer that. If they ask it in that first phone call or two, again, you're gonna push back, you're gonna deflect that answer, and you're gonna say, I don't know enough about the position to really tell you that. Can you tell me what your range is? And if you can get them to tell you what their range is, we've all heard, right? Have them give you the information first. Now you know whether it's a good fit for you or not. Now, I'm gonna tell you something a little contrary to most negotiation experts. Most negotiation experts are gonna say, never ever talk first. I'm gonna say, if you can do that, great. But most of us aren't as experienced as, at this as these negotiation experts. So, 
if you get to the point where they're like, no, really, you need to tell me what your range is and I'm not going to share with you, be prepared to share. And what we're going to talk about now is ways for you to share that information, but to make sure that you're answering that the question the right way. So again, your first attempt, you're going to acknowledge their question. Hey, I understand why you're asking me this. You're, let's make sure that we're on the same page. But I don't know enough about the position yet. So if you could tell me what your range is, so you're going to keep putting it back on them as long as you can. But when they do come back at you and insist, what you're going to do is you're going to find a way to um, find something, a win-win. Um, in one of the negotiation books I've read, they talk about um, compromise never being the right way to go. Um, and, they, and they tell a story about a gentleman going to work and he wants to wear his brown shoes and his wife wants him to wear his black shoes. A compromise would consist of him wearing one black shoe and one brown shoe. Now, does that sound like a win for anybody? No, it does not. So you wanna find something that works for everybody. And sometimes it's not gonna be based on salary. Uh, sometimes it's gonna be based on benefits or, um, or um, intangible things like work from home, um, a better workspace, that sort of thing. So at the end of the day, you have to be flexible, but you also have to know what's important to you. So how do we do that? The first thing you have to do, and this step that the vast majority of job seekers skip is figuring out what you're worth, okay? If you don't know what you're worth, nobody else does either. And the company has a budget and they're trying to keep their costs as low as possible. So I know that every penny I pay to my employees is, is money that I don't get to take home. So while I'm, I'm a wise enough employer to pay my employees well, so they'll give me a return, I still don't wanna pay them more than I have to, more than the market rate. So the first thing you want to do, we live in a day and age of tons of information. Go online and do some research. It's really quite simple. You're going to look at more than one um, job site. Salary.com is one of my favorites because they're going to give job descriptions that are going to dig a little bit deeper into the, um, the actual job duties of the position. And from there, you can go on to other sites. Glassdoor is a really good one. If you don't have a Glassdoor account, I recommend you get one, they're free. What they ask in return is that you share some of your personal information. It's all kept confidential, it's separated from you, but that's how they get their information. They're actually uh, publishing information from employees of various companies. So especially if you're looking in a particular company, you can, um, you can find out what they're paying. Pay scale is another one. If you belong to a professional trade association, for example, I belong to the local, local Dallas Sherm chapter. So if I was gonna go job hunting, I would go into there and they would give me uh, job ranges in the DFW area. And it's really important to not only look at national averages, but to look at local averages because those are gonna be different. Crystal, okay. uh, Neil raised his hand. Neil, you have oh, a question? Go ahead, Neil. Neil, you're still online? Yeah, my, my mistake. I didn't mean to put my hand up. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. All right. All right. So we're going to set a cut. We're, we're going to come up with three numbers before we have our very first negotiation. Before we have our first interview, we should have three numbers that we've come up with. The very first number is going to be your budget. And this is not something you have to share with anybody. This is just something that you have to know for you. What is the absolute minimum amount of money I can afford to take and live every day? And I'm not talking about that unemployed budget. I'm not talking about eating grilled cheese sandwiches and not going anywhere. Or I guess that's our quarantine budget too, isn't it? I'm talking about, I like to go to the movies every Friday night and we like to get the big popcorn and extra sodas and we like to spend, you know, quite a bit of money there. We're talking about, we like to go to Bob's once a, 
once a month and, and eat out and have a date night. Whatever your budget looks like, make it a reasonable one and figure out what do I need to be making. And we should all have budgets all the time, but sometimes we don't. Sometimes we get comfortable. Now's a really great time to sit down and break that down. Okay, and you should do that before you ever start looking at what your salary range should be because you want to be realistic about that. Now, once you've done that, now go do your research and I want you to figure out what is the minimum I should reasonably offer, be offered. That's if all the stars align, you get all the benefits you want, everything's perfect. It's your perfect job. You've got a purpose every day. Everything is perfect. You're working 38 hours a week instead of 40, working from home two days a week, whatever your ideal is, What's the minimum you should be offered around that? And then your other number is gonna be, what is the maximum I can reasonably ask for? Insurance isn't great, I'm driving a little bit further than I want to, but everything else lines up. What's the maximum amount I can ask? So you'll notice I talked about benefits in both of those. Benefits have a dollar value, a lot of them do. And nowadays, especially medical, it's so darned expensive. Um, you know, I tell job seekers to average in about $1,000 a month for insurance. Hopefully you're going to go to work for a larger company. It's not going to be that bad, but you just don't know. And that's not a conversation you can have until further along in the process. So that number, so the first number, um, what's the minimum I can, I can afford to take? That's your personal budget, and that's not something you're going to share. But that's something that we're going to hope that your minimum is over. Your minimum should be at that number or over. If it's not, you need to be very, very aware of that because the last thing you want to do is take a job and a month in realize that you can't pay your mortgage. Okay, so just that's what that number's for is to help keep you set. You know, I've got my dream job here, but I can't afford to live. Okay, that's something you have to be able to look at and work around and know that maybe that's not really your dream job if they're not willing to pay you what you need. Um, or maybe you need to reset your budget if what you've, if, if you do your research and figure out what you're doing is going to take you below that. Um, I work with a lot of job seekers who are changing industries and we all hit a certain point in our career where it becomes very difficult to change industries because we're going to have to take some sort of a pay cut. So just, just be aware of the reality of those numbers and then you can work around it. And then of course, you know, when you do your research, you're going to move up and down the scale based on the number of years experience, based on the amount of their, the skills that you're using. Um, you know, I can go somewhere and answer phones and I'm going to ask for a lot less money than I am if I go somewhere and they ask me to run their small business. And I've done both. Now, granted, I'm going to get bored answering phones, right? And so that might not be what I want. But sometimes we're taking a step back for various reasons. So anyway, that's a, a, a long drawn out way of saying, do your research, spend the time on this. This is the absolute most important step of negotiating your salary. And if you don't do this, you're not going to come out on top. If you do do this, then you've got no fear when you negotiate because you're asking for something pretty darn reasonable. And if the company doesn't want to play ball, well, then it's probably not worth taking that job. Research the company. Okay, we've all heard this. We all know we've got to do it. Um, but again, what are the position expectations? Are they using every single one of my skills and stretching me? Or am I using just two or three of my skills? And, um, and it's going to be an easy job for me. Crystal, we've got a question here from Neil. He wants to know if all the online sources give a salary range and you're in that, but they lowball you, what do you then do? You ask for more money. And if they push back, you, you bring them that documentation. You bring it and, and you, ha you have a conversation about it. You, the hard part is leaving emotion out of that. And I think that's where a lot of people lose is they get upset, they get offended, you bring them the information and you say, look, I've done my research. It says you're, you're coming in about 15 grand lower than what my research says is reasonable. Can we talk about why that is? And they may come back and they may say, well, here's why. Here's a really legitimate reason. 
they may come back and go, oh, we didn't do our own research. They may say, tough luck, this is all we've got. But now you can, from there, work through that. Some companies just don't value their employees, but this is a great time to find that out before you've accepted that job. Does that answer that question? Hey, is that good? Whoop, let me unmute me. Let me look at that chat. Sorry, I'm not. No, I yeah. can't pull up the chat bar there. He said thanks. Okay, good. Yes, that was great. Thank you very much. Perfect. Okay. I mean, one um, other one other yes. thing, if I can interject, I know I've used this in the past, or I've heard other people talk about this, is that uh, somebody's on you. Uh, a comment I've heard in the past, or the way to say it is, if somebody asks you what your salary requirements are, you go and say, well, you know, according to salary.com and the Bureau of Labor Statistics, for a position in this area, the range is between X and Y, and I'm sure whatever you're going to pay is going to be fair and equitable. That is a great way of putting it and of leaving yourself open in early on in the conversation. And what I didn't dig into, and I'm, I'm going to say it, I, I touched on it, but I didn't, I didn't say it clearly. When you have that conversation on that very first phone call, when you don't know anything, give them the ridiculously large range. You know, well, I'm looking for somewhere between 110 and 160. Well, that's kind of a big range. Why is it so big? I don't know enough about the position yet. But the further into the conversation you get, the more you can narrow that. So at the end of the day, you know, when you're in that negotiation phase, you can go in and go, you know, somewhere between 120 and 125 is going to be great based on what I know about this position. Well, that makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? So don't be scared to start broad. I know a lot. I know they ask on online applications a lot, and sometimes they won't let you give it that broad just do your best. Um, there's no, there's not really any good answer for that, um, except that if you can get away with putting zeros or X's um, or a dollar in and then notate that this is something you want to talk about, do that. Um, we forget to talk about company culture. Um, but I'm going to, we've all heard that, you know, people don't quit companies, they quit managers. Culture is a huge deal. Do you love your job? Can you not wait to get up and go to work every day? That's going to play into your salary requirements. Do you hate your job? Is every day a nightmare? Um, well, you may want a little bit more if you're not doing something. <laughs> you know, I, I, you read a lot about passion in your job. So if you're doing something that you're passionate about, you feel like you're making a difference. So think about that company culture. Do you like the people you work with? Does the company culture fit with what you're looking for? Um, I'm an extrovert. I like people. I hate working in environment, you know, everywhere I work, I make friends with the people around me. I'm an executive workspace. I now have my neighbors, even though I don't work with them. There are other there are other people who want to go to work, do their jobs, not talk to anybody and go home. If you're in the wrong culture, it's not going to be a good fit. So consider that as when you're doing this process. Um, and then I touched on benefits. There are both tangible and intangible benefits. Tangible benefits are medical, dental, PTO. Um, intangible benefits are work from home. So intangible are the ones that don't have a dollar amount associated with them. Tangible benefits are the ones that do. And again, it's and medical is the biggest one here because it's got such a large dollar amount associated with it. But roll that in. If you're not sure, your W-2 will have a place on it. So go look at last year's W-2 and see what your company paid on your behalf for your medical insurance. That's part of your compensation. It may be something you never ever see, but it's important. And it's very important when you're doing um, your negotiation. Larger companies, it's gonna be very expensive for you. Smaller companies, it's gonna be very expensive. So if, especially if you're changing company size, that's gonna, that's gonna come into play and that's gonna be very important. You may, become, you may end up taking the exact same salary you had at your last job 
and you may end up taking home $500 a month less because they're charging you more for your medical. So just be aware of things like that. Now, and that's absolutely not a conversation you can have until much, much later in the process. So just when you're giving that range, think about those things. Um, know where you stand. You know, if, if you come in and I, I, I talked to somebody yesterday um, who I referred to another friend of mine who's looking for some help and they're a relatively small company. She's an HR manager, that's what they're looking for, but they're looking for somebody that can help with accounts too. And so if she had those skills, she could probably ask for a little bit more money than if she's just doing administrative HR work. Um, again, you know, the difference between an admin who just answers the phone and passes messages and orders supplies versus the admin who is assisting the CEO in making decisions and um, relating with employees. What, what, what skills are you actually using? How much leverage do you actually have in this position? Um, is the company chasing you? If they reached out to you, if they found you on LinkedIn and they're chasing you, you've got a lot more leverage than if they're going, well, I don't know, you know, you've got some of the skills, but we're really looking for X, Y, and Z. You're not going to negotiate, you're not going to have as much wiggle room, as much negotiation room in that second scenario as you are in the first. Know when not to negotiate. If they come in 15% higher than the top of your range, you may not want to negotiate. Now you may want to figure out why. Sometimes companies that have high turnover do that and you want to find out why, why is the turnover so high. Um, but some sometimes there's not room to negotiate. I'm going to encourage people to negotiate 90% of the time, but sometimes there's just not room. You know, if you're going, if you got laid off because of COVID and you're going to go work at Target for the next three months while things come together, guess what? You're not going to negotiate. You're going to take what they give you. So just have, have the, um, have the foresight to know when negotiating is not a good idea. And if you're not sure, check, ask people, go on, check these websites, um, you know, ask, find an expert to ask, but um, just kind of be, be cognizant of when it's available. Um, are you working? If you're working, unfortunately, you're, you're a stronger candidate than if you're unemployed. Now I'm going to tell you, that's a statement that's been true. That's always kind of kind of one of those absolute truths. Right now, we are in an unprecedented time. I've had a lot of conversations with candidates, with clients about, oh my God, how do I explain this opening? Guess what? Everybody, how, how many people are unemployed right now? What did they say on the news? Something like eight eight hundred thousand people have been through TWC in the last two weeks. Look, you're not alone in this. And this is not a gap that you're gonna to have to explain. Why were you unemployed at the beginning of 2020? COVID, end of discussion. Don't overthink this piece, okay? When things start opening up, when, when we hit things like that, it's like the crash in 2008. When we hit these things, you don't have to have this big elaborate story. You don't have to make um, excuses or explanations. It is what it is. We still know, you know, 12 years later, I, I see a gap in the resume in 08. I'm like, okay, moving on. I know what happened. Um, how closely do you fit their job description? One of the things I advise my clients to do before any interview, and actually this should be part of your cover letter, is to go through that job description and go line by line. And you may not go line by line in a cover letter. That's a little bit much. But go line by line and go, how do I fit this piece? How do I fit this piece? How do I fit this piece? That way, by the time you're having a conversation, you know. And if you hit all of their marks, you can ask for more money. If you hit a third of them, mm, you're, you're going to maybe ask for the lower end of the range. The health of the company. Okay, right now, there are some companies that are barely hanging on. If, when they're ready to start hiring again, they may not be in a position 
to negotiate large salaries. They may be ask, they may be looking at middle or lower end of the ranges just because that's what they can afford, but they wanna get people working again. So be cognizant of that. And right now that is more important than ever. Um, again, we talked about benefits, what benefits are being offered, who's chasing who, that's very important as well. Um, get it in writing. It never ceases to amaze me how many people do this verbally, okay? Verbal is great. That's where you're gonna start, obviously, especially if the company expects you to negotiate with them. They're not gonna give you an immediate formal written offer. They're gonna call you, they're gonna go, hey, we'd love to bring you on. This is what we're thinking. What do you think? But if you can't, I've, if you don't get it in writing, then you might not have understood it clearly. Things change. <clears throat> um, people leave, especially if you're negotiating something unique. Okay, I'm going to take this offer today, but if I produce A, B, and C, then in 60 days, you're going to bump me to this. Get that in writing. What happens if the hiring manager leaves? What happens if they didn't run it through HR and now it's your word against their word? Uh, and it doesn't have to be a formal letter. Not all companies do formal offer letters. I, they should, but they don't. So, but if you just have them, when, when you agree on an offer, ask them to send you an email with the information. So great, if you will send that to me in writing, let me review it. Let me sleep on it. Let me discuss it with my spouse and I will respond via email agreeing to it by tomorrow or whatever your timeline is. Um, I have never ever seen a legitimate reason not to get it in writing. So there may be one out there that I'm not aware of, um, but if they're not willing to put it in writing, I'd ask myself why. So recap, real simple. Know your market value, research the company, know where they're at, get a salary range when you can, push off that conversation as late as possible. Now, I didn't dig into why here. The reason you wanna push that offer as late as possible, again, I'm looking to keep my budget as low as possible. And I'm thinking, and forgive me for this range, but I like to keep my number simple. I'm looking to pay 10 to $12 an hour. You're really fantastic, and I've, I've, now I've interviewed you three, three times. I've invested all this time in you. I really, really like you. I know you're a great fit to my organization. I'm more likely to give you that 13 than you're asking for than I, am, than I am on the front end. On the front end, I'm still talking to 15 other people that are saying 10 to $12 is fine. So the longer you can push that conversation, the better you are. And then of course, get it in writing. All right, so that went a lot faster than it normally does because we didn't have a lot of feedback. Um, questions? If you want, just uh, you can unmute your mic and uh, ask your question away. Hi, Crystal. Hi, David, hi. Um, so one of the things that you, you, you talked about is to try to get the offer in writing. Uh, I, I recently talked to a, a colleague who was negotiating an offer. He's actually been through the, through, through these meetings is where I met him. And, and he mentioned that the company or the hiring manager told him that once HR had drafted the offer letter, that it was out of her hands, that she could not at that point negotiate it. And she said, if we had had this conversation before the offer letter was drafted, then she would have had better leverage. Is that something that you've heard before or it, would you work around that? It, it happens. It's, a, it's, it's not the best way to do business, um, but sometimes you've got real rigid hierarchies and it does happen. So you don't have to demand it in writing up front. Again, you know, they're generally gonna email you, they're gonna call you. Sometimes they're using that as an excuse. Um, just ask for it in writing before you finalize your acceptance. Does that make sense? Am I answering that? Am I answering what you're asking? Yes, thank you. Okay. Louise, I think you had a question next. Yes, yeah, thanks, Jeff. 
Crystal, thank you for taking time and for your presentation this morning. It was very insightful, uh, lots of good things to keep in mind as you negotiate. My question is, I, um, I'm wondering in today's climate what your opinion is if you think that uh, employers would be less likely to negotiate anything at this point since there's so many people looking for work? It, it's possible, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't ask. Um, and ask, and, and if they say they don't have the funds, then, then negotiate a 30, 60, 90, you know, six month review. A lot of companies aren't gonna go back and do raises until you've hit that year mark. So sometimes, even if you can't get that money right away, you can say, okay, but in six months, let's, let's revisit it instead of waiting a year. So yes, I think there are gonna be organizations that are cash strapped. We're seeing a lot of it and those relief funds ran out quick, but it doesn't mean there aren't ways to negotiate. And it doesn't mean you shouldn't ask. Thank you. If anybody else has a question, raise your hand and we'll call on you. Just go to the participant box in the very bottom. You can raise your hand. Where? John, you have a question? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. So essentially, with the way this is going, it's still going to be the same market, though, on the extreme side. So you might as well just focus on what you were going to do and just be ready to watch more of the cues and be aware of the cues and do better research to find out. And then if you present yourself, you probably have more negotiating power than if you don't. Right? Exactly. So it's pretty much talking same game, different story. Go with the same thing and be a little more sharper in your technique. Exactly. Um, I'm going to tell you, even the organizations that haven't been hit hard yet are nervous right now talking to a lot of small business clients right now that are terrified. They're okay right now, but they're terrified. So you probably are going to come across a lot of organizations that are lowballing salaries.